In typical individuals, phenylalanine is metabolized into tyrosine, which is a precursor for dopamine, which is a very important neurotransmitter throughout the brain. Um, individuals with PKU have a deficiency in the PAH enzyme that's responsible for the metabolism of the phenylalanine into the tyrosine. So you can end up with decreased amounts of tyrosine, but also decreased amounts of dopamine. Um, what we've learned though is it's not that simple. So with someone who has PKU, if they ingest a fair amount of phenylalanine, that phenylalanine will build up in the system and it causes problems in and of itself. So for example, the phenylalanine will compete with other um, substances such as tryptophan to get into the brain. Well, tryptophan is important for you and I because it's the precursor for another neurotransmitter, serotonin which we all hear about when we talk about things like anxiety and depression. The excess phenylalanine can also cross over into the, the brain and cause problems there. So it's been known to disrupt a number of different processes, including things like protein synthesis, also the formation and maintenance of what we call myelin. And that's the fatty sheathing that, that um, covers many axonal projections, um, nerves and allows for the quick uh, transmission of information across those. So it can, it can lead to uh, disruptions of that as well. So you have this very complex picture of the different neurophysiological ways that the brain is affected. Um. In our work, we kind of look at the brain from 20,000 feet up. So we're looking at more gr gross brain structure, um, nuances of it, but not at the cellular level uh, per se. So, and, and what we see is these abnormalities in the white matter. And um, uh, again, for lack of a better word, if effectively when we run MRIs, different parts of the brain show up or different pictures of parts of the picture show up in, in atypical um, colors. If, if you will, we expect them to be dark, they show bright white and, and whatnot. So we call them hyper intensities. They're, they're brighter than usual. Um, what we see in those is they tend, to, they tend to, when they first occur, be more posterior in the brain. And with increased severity, they extend more anterior into the front parts of the brain. And it's very sort of classic in a sense that we see the same general pattern across patients. Uh, we don't always see these in kids. They're not they're not as evident as individuals get older though they become more evident on the MRIs and so we've we've seen that from a neurological standpoint the other things we see is we've started to look at what we call functional connectivity so this is the idea of not what do the connections look like in the brain but how well do they work and you know, we've looked at these networks of brain regions that we know in individuals without PKU in the general population are, are well networked meaning that as one of these brain regions increases activity, another one increases or, or vice versa. And we've seen disruptions of the, in that as well. Uh, again, it seems to be related to phenylalanine levels. So higher fee levels are associated with higher disruptions in both the structural and the functional integrity of these networks.